சூரதி summarized summarized Islam in many different sayings which is one line as we said before that all Islam all the message of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is in the verse of Allah Rasul wa Amri Minkum obey Allah obey Prophet and obey the authority also in the hadith of Prophet وسلم, there are many meanings for this verse which he said which it, it can give us some kind of understanding of the verse obey Allah and obey Prophet Prophet وسلم, said in Lam Tastahi Fafal Mashit. If you don't feel shy or ashamed, do whatever you like. The one who is not ashamed, it doesn't mean to him anything, doesn't mean anything to him. then what is going to, to control him? Nothing. That's why Prophet ﷺ said, if you are not ashamed of your, you don't have this feeling to be ashamed in front of people, do whatever you, then you, everything you can do, it's no problem. If you are not ashamed to drink from people, you are not going to be ashamed to drink from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not ashamed from Allah, how you are going to be ashamed? If you are not ashamed from people, so you do whatever you do, you are someone who is written an unbeliever. So, means whatever you do, it is not going to benefit you. Today, people are not ashamed if we check, let us check ourselves and we see many places, although Alhamdulillah with Allah's grace and honor and Prophet Sallallahu Baraka, they made us Muslim. But in that Muslimhood, not in Islam, in Muslimhood, we have nuqsaniyya, shortcomings. This shortcoming comes when we don't feel ashamed. So you might do anything. And the most thing is to backbite and to, because it has hukuk al akharin it has the rights of other in it. If you do a sin, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, repent, I forgive you. But if you harm someone, Muslim or non-Muslim, even you repent, Allah will not forgive you until that person forgives you. And you know in, 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 in the nature of a, a human beings, they don't forget and they don't forgive. Very difficult to find someone who forgives if you harm him. Correct? But not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Repent. He say, repent anytime I forgive you. 
Awliya Allah, they say our doors are so wide from east to west. Come. You will not, never find a door closed in front of you. Come and repent. Not to repent to them, means repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doors are wide enough. But when you harm someone because you don't feel ashamed, you backbite someone, you spread rumors against someone, you do things that is not nice, تترتب عليها حقوق العباد. The rights of people, the, the rights of people is there. So you cannot get Allah's forgiveness if that person is not forgiving you. That's why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he asked, من ال, من المفلس, they said, who is the one, the poor or the bankrupted? They said, the one who has no money. He said, no, he has no amal. They said, Ya Rasulullah, wa in sama wa in salah, even if he prays and fasts, he said, even if he prays and fasts, he has no amal. Because he is, doesn't feel ashamed. He backbites. Most, the worst character that we have is backbiting. We backbite, we create uh, something not nice, create a fitna in the community. From one word might we. That's what, what we, the shiuch teach us to keep our mouth closed. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam took his disciples and went into the Siyah journey in the desert. And suddenly on the side they saw a dog dead, dead dog. And the smell filling the whole area. So everyone began to close his noses, not to smell. Because smell is so much coming out. He wants to teach them a lesson. He doesn't know that he's going to see a dog in the desert. He knows. He wants to teach them a lesson. So smell of backbiting is like that dirty smell of a flesh, dirty flesh. Grand Sheikh said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the graves and allow the smell that comes from deceased people, from their backbitings, this whole world will faint from that bad smell. From one person. It's a bad smell that people will be tortured in the grave with it. Their own smell, not something coming from outside. So may Allah forgive us and not to make us to smell like that. So Sayyidina Isa checking, they were coming and they were closing their noses. And Sayyidina Isa with his stick opening the mouth of the dog and say subhanallah look at his teeth how Allah created them nicely look at his tongue how it's created nicely look at his eyes he is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the creation of his creatures he said don't look at the smell Look at the greatness of the creation, of the creator. So it means, don't backbite what they have done bad. Look at what they have done good. Allah likes good. Allah looks at good, doesn't look at bad. 
So Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Fa'in lam tastahi, fa'fal ma shayt." If you don't feel ashamed, do whatever you like to do. There is repentance if it is related between you and Allah. Allah will forgive you. You repent. But if it is the right of others, until the others forgives you, Allah will forgive you. Because in the day of judgment, Allah will bring two that they were against each other. And one of them, he say, Ya Rabbi, I want my right from that one because he backbited me in dunya. Ya Abdi, oh my servant, forgive him. No way, I'm not forgiving him. I'm not. I want my right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, okay. Allah ahsanul hakimin, ahkamul hakimin, the best judge. He takes from the amal of that, the one who was backbiting, give to the one who was backbited. Are you happy? No, not yet. Until there will be nothing left of hasanat on that person. That's why he said, Wa in sama wa in sallala amalala. He has no amal even if he fast and pray. Because everything been taken away and given to the other one who is being backbited. Then Allah say, Ya Abdi, are you content? He said, No, Ya Rabbi, not yet. He harmed me a lot in dunya. Because this really backbiting and fitna and room, bad rumors hurt a lot. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take from the bad amal sayyat of that backbited one, give to the one who was backbiting. So the backbited become no, the backbited become, have no sayyat and full of hasanat. Go to paradise. The, the other one standing in front of Allah and that doesn't know what to do, worried. And Allah will say, but before he goes to paradise, Allah will ask the one who goes to paradise, are you Content, he said, yeah, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, now I am content. He took all the amal, the good amal, he gave him all the bad amal. He is content, Ya Rabbi, now I am content, I am happy. You forgive him, I forgive him now. Because he took everything. Now the other one, poor one, has nothing going through hellfire. And Allah looked at him, he said, after he judges between them, he says, um, I, am, I am the one that I put in my servant contentment. He is not more merciful than me. You are going also to paradise, go to paradise. But we don't want to stand in this position in the day of judgment. May Allah forgive us. So, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in another hadith, من إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه. If you want to perfect your Islam, you must know you have to live beside things that it doesn't concern you. Means don't jump in a conversation and begin give your opinion. Don't jump into a conversation two people are fighting in order to become one of them. Support one against the other. Don't jump into something that it does not concern you. You are hearing people talking and you didn't like, don't say, no, this is wrong, this is correct, leave them. Don't be tablighi. It's not your responsibility. Knocking at door of people. Allah said in Holy Quran, when you recite Quran, 
in your homes, lower your voice, because in the time of Prophet ﷺ, Sahaba used to raise their voice loud in Salatul Maghrib, Salatul Isha, and Salatul Fajr. Mushrikeen, unbelievers used to hear that Quran and they were cursing Allah and His Prophet. So Prophet said, lower your voice. Don't raise your voice for people to hear and curse. So means, don't jump into a conversation that will make you to be cursed and Allah will be cursed and Prophet will be cursed. Like Tablighi people, they go at doors, they knock at the doors. Come, pray with us. He doesn't listen. So he wants to pray in his house, he doesn't want to go with them. Next day, come. Ya Muhammad, come. His name, or Hassan. Ya Hassan, come, pray with us. He doesn't, he's sleeping. Third day, Ya Hassan, come. He doesn't. Fourth day, they, they want to know, they're looking at the name, it changed to John. <laughs> he became non-Muslim. He is a Muslim. He gets fed up with them. He changed his name. Not to knock at his door. You have a lot of this in Montreal. When I used to go there a lot in the 90s, too many tablighi, they go to the buildings and they see because you have all the bell, bells and with the names. They see a Muslim, Ya Allah, press the bell. And a lot of fitna. For what? Who wants to pray? Pray. Who doesn't want to pray? Speak to them, argue with them with the best way. Don't fight with them. So he said, leave what does not concern you. This doesn't concern you. To knock at people's door. Did you see anyone knocking at people's door? Yes, especially in Pakistan. Even here, sir. Even here, huh? Yeah. He's saying. They are everywhere. Four in the morning, huh? Another witness. So if you want to perfect your Islam, comes to what concern you and leave what does not concern you. What concern you is to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your focus is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness, tawheed, and on his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on Islam, on Holy Quran. That's it. You have nothing else to look for. Allah said, لا تهدي من أحببتنا الله يهدي من يشاء Allah don't guide whom you like. Allah will guide whom He likes. Means guidance in Allah's hand. Not, not in Tablighi's hand. To make people to run away from Islam, take their name, change their name into Jonathan or Christ. Or there is Christ, Christopher. Tahir is going to change his name. So. So surrender, and when you surrender, then you will be an example for others. Because they see your way of handling things and talking. And it is said that one day, there was a man, a rich man. You know in these old times, they used to buy helpers they used to sell sorry for where is that one it's it was a culture issue not an islamic issue it was a cultural issue 
is not only slavery is that they brought the Africans to Europe and the America. No, it's slavery. It was in every place. Even today, you can find it in Yemen. You can find it in Africa. People they sell in Fiji, in far countries, and the, they sell still today. So he bought Mamluk, a servant. But that servant, he was a very sincere and pious person. He was a Muslim, very sincere, praying his five prayers, fasting, doing all kinds of tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the owner loved him so much because he is pious. He said to him, Oh my good servant, what you like to eat? Uh, never a master will ask the servant what you like to eat. They give them anything and they eat. Huh? He asked, but he asked him, asked him, what you like to eat? And he said, oh my master, whatever you give me, I'm happy. Servant, they don't say that, whatever you give me, I am happy. They always don't want to complain. Always they want to what? They want to complain. Salman al Faris, he was a, a slave that they sold. Originally he's not, but he, he was to go to see Prophet because he was being told by his teacher, the Razarastian teacher who helped him for 20, 25 years. He told him there will be after because he was dying there will, you want he said where I go after you he said go to Baghdad there will, there is a priest there that he will teach you where to go finally he came end up in Medina to Munawar I will tell that story later but to see Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he sold himself as a servant to reach Medina. So servants is maqamul taslimiya, the level of servanthood, of submission. So he asked him, what you want to, to eat? He said, whatever you give me. Then he asked him, what you like to dress? He said, whatever you dress me with. And then he said to him, where you want to live in my home, which room you like, where, where you want to, to decide what you want, where you want. He said, oh my master, wherever you put me, I go. I stay. I don't have preference. You put me in a small room or you put me in a big room, for me it's the same. You are my master, you can do whatever you like to me. I have, I cannot raise my head in front of you. I'm always putting my head down and my eyes down. You order, sami'na wa ata'na. I listen and obey. Is that? Uh, for a, a room of one, one, one meter by three meter is bigger than a room in a, in a, a bigger than the grave. Happy, no problem. But as Allahu Akbar, you see how much our ego is like Pharaoh. Our ego is so arrogant, so stubborn. We are not happy with anything. We are always complaining. Even they give you all the treasure of the world, still you complain. Yeah? 
Then he said to him, okay, what you like to do of work in my home? He said, whatever you like. I do anything. I clean toilets, because many people, they don't want to clean toilets. And the first to enter paradise is the one who cleans toilets in a masjid. Khadimul yeah. Masjid, servant of the masjid goes first, before the Imam. So don't think you Imam, oh, not you. Don't think the Imam going to go first, no, going to go last. So he said, what do you want to do from work? He said, anything. Cleaning, fixing, cooking, uh, whatever you want. Taking the sheep, uh, looking after them, whatever you want. Cutting wood for winter. He said, then what you ordered me? What is your order for me? Hearing? So he said, wherever you give me work, I work. Cleaning, fixing, looking after the sheep, looking after the chickens, not eating the chickens and the sheep every day, and slaughtering them one after one and eating the eggs. Come and stealing without asking. We left in uh, 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 March, middle of March. We came middle of, end of June. No more chickens. Where did the chicken go? 150 chickens. Oh, the raccoons ate that. Where are the eggs every day? Oh, the raccoon eating the eggs. They left two chickens. No problem. Uh, it is there, Allah written on every chicken who is going to eat it. No problem. Eat, he ate it. A chicken, Allah will replace, not with one chicken, Allah will replace hundreds of chicken. Allah is generous, but submit. He said, okay, what? He said, what you order me now to do? Yeah, oh my master. And the man began to cry. The master began to cry. Fabakar Rajul. He said, Tuba li law kuntu ma'a rabbi azza wa jal kama anta ma'i. Good tidings or it will be great if I would have been with my Lord as you are with me. Means complete submission. This is a servant to his master. What you think? This and his complete submission to a man like him. What you think, Awliya Allah, their submission to Allah, and what you think, prophets, their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what you, what you think, the seals of messenger, his submission to Allah No one can understand. فقال المملوك, the servant at that time said, Oh my master, does the servant has a will or a choice with his master? No choice. Whatever you order, it has happened. There is no will. Means no will in front of Allah's will. Leave things as they are flowing. And get from Allah the reward. And the master said, Oh my servant, and he's crying, you are free. 
you are not anymore servant. I free you from serving me. But stay with me. I am going to stay. You stay in my room and I am going to stay in another room. And I am going to serve you. Not you serving me. I want to serve you. I will serve you with myself. Be baraka for me. And I will serve you with my wealth. All my wealth under your feet. Yeah, and, uh... He doesn't need wealth. He was taking and giving. And Allah give more business to that master. Whoever knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes into ma'rifatullah as we were speaking in the morning, the ocean of, uh, of ma'rifah, will never has any more irada will or a choice to choose. Everything he leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because our irada is, is fake. It has no meaning. The irada is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now people they say, oh, oh but we have a, we can do things, okay you can do things, but the general irada is like someone, it's an example, goes on a plane, there is a point of takeoff, there is a point of landing. Is that? You cannot play with that. Taking off, taking off. They come to dunya. Everyone landing to akhira. They cannot change. There at that time, as Imam uh, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali said, at that time their eyes are open when they go to grave, when they die. They know the reality. Everything is open there. Now we are not open. We are inside the plane. Plane is flying from one place to another. But in the plane you can move. You can walk right, you can walk left, you choose the seat you want to sit in. You didn't like that seat, you want to change with someone else, someone else does not let you, you box him, he box you, punch him, you punch you, fight inside the plane, but still it is inside. You cannot change the taking off and landing. Landing in Akhira in the grave, Taking off when you come birth to dunya. No one can s stop that. Those who are on living, one day they are leaving, they are landing. The plane is landing at that time. May Allah forgive us to see everything good. And Allah give us paradise. Wa min Allahi tawfiq bi hurmatil fatiha. So put that story of that master and his servant in front of your eyes and submit to Allah as well. Don't be like a fish struggling. Be like a whale. Whale doesn't die on the in the ocean. It goes land landing on the beach and die. So be like a whale, always the whole ocean under his command. When you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's oneness, tawheed, very well, this dunya Allah will make it under your command. You will never see anything to complain. But what we see today complaining is because we are struggling. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us through his Prophet وسلم, and through our shiyukh to reach highest level of ma'rifatullah, the love of Prophet, love of Allah and love of our, of our shiyukh. And love of Islam, love of Quran, love of each other insha'Allah. Wa min Allahi tawfiq. Another time bi hurmatil fatiha. Shukran, Ya Sheikh Mustafa. Why he has to come from
25 hours, how many hours? 30 hours? 24 hours all the way where he has in his country thousands and thousands of followers ready to serve his feet even. Is correct? And this one here coming from Indonesia the same. All the way. For what? To see you, to spend some time with people whom they love. So that attract them. Why hundreds of thousands go and visit Maulana Sheikh in Cyprus? For what? That love attract, that role model attract them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us attracted to awliya Allah. And keep them attracted to us. Ameen. Harumat al-Fatiha. People today, youngsters, they do drugs. They do all kinds of womanizing, drinking. But they found that it is empty. There is no life in it. There is nothing that when the call comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance, in one night they change. But those who are not lucky, they will never get this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That moment of awareness that comes to the youngsters, drop dunya, come to akhirah. It's only for lucky ones, not for everyone. Many people, they, they, they are raised on that and they are suffering. Even they become 50, 60, 70, 80, they still be suffering from drinking and drugs and so on. But when guidance comes, you must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that guided you to drop all this kind of drugs, marijuana, or I don't know, what else? Are <laughs> Cocaine, what? Pudr? <laughs> all kind of pudr. They cannot leave it. But Allah, when Allah's guidance comes, everything will be dropped. And as if they are born today clean. Allah will forgive because when you ask forgiveness and say, Ya Rabbi, I repented, I don't want anymore. That is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be forgiven. And you'll be thanking him that he gave you that body and that soul to keep it clean, not to keep it dirty. Surprising. In countries where they plant these things, they don't smoke it. <laughs> but they send it to Western countries to smoke it. And in Western countries, people become addicted. How many Muslim I saw saying to me, oh, my child, my son, my daughter, my this, my that, what you do? Make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. May Allah forgive us. Don't do marijuana. As ask anyone, he will say, yeah, I did it. You did it? Ayub? Huh? Must be in this country, must be, someone did it. Yeah. Might be not you in your country, but if you come here, after two, three years, if you company Tahir, you'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> we have two Tahirs here, you have to choose one. May Allah forgive us, you are free. Those who wants to go back from Canada back to Canada, they can go. Uh, inshallah, next week, Thursday or Friday evening, we'll bring the holy hair of Prophet.